What's up, physiologists? We're going to go over the steps of an action potential starting at first with a neuron at rest. So a resting neuron, remember, has an overall charge. Oop, let's correct our video a little bit. Overall charge inside the cell of negative 70 millivolts. Think about why we have some negatively charged A minus proteins contributing to that. We also have different permeabilities to sodium and potassium into and out of the cell. Remember that the cell is 75 times more permeable to potassium. Now our second step is depolarization. Do you remember this from our muscle unit? Neurotransmitters are released from the presynaptic cell to bind to receptors on the postsynaptic cell. When they bind in this chemically gated channel, they allow for sodium to enter the cell. That positive influx is going to stimulate voltage-gated receptors to open on neighboring channels along the length of the axon. As this occurs, as sodium rushes into the cell, the inside of the cell, or the intracellular fluid, increases in charge, causing the charge of the cell to move closer to zero or become more positive. Our third step is repolarization. During repolarization, now that the cell is overcrowded with positive charge, potassium channels are going to open, allowing potassium to exit the cell. This, again, occurs in a wave-like propagation along the length of the axon. Now, this restores the charge of the cell, but our ions have switched places. In step four, hyperpolarization, a larger amount of potassium exits the cell. This happens so that our body allows for some sort of safeguard to keep us from sending a second stimulus too soon. Think about those relative versus absolute refractory periods. Meanwhile, to get everything back to normal, the sodium-potassium pump is pumping K or potassium back into the cell and sodium back out of the cell, getting every ion back in its original spot. Now, let's go through this together looking at the charges of the cell. The cell starts off at rest. When sodium comes into the cell, that charge begins to increase, what we call depolarization. When it reaches that threshold, it's going to be an all-or-none event. Now, once it hits its peak of 30 millivolts, Potassium is going to enter the cell, and we call this repolarization. Step four, hyperpolarization, meaning going below that original charge is when more potassium leaves the cell. And finally, the sodium-potassium pump kicks everything back into place. Going through that one more time, our cell is at rest. Some sort of stimulus occurs. It reaches what we call threshold, creating an all-or-none event. Depolarization is due to an influx of sodium, creating an overall charge of 100 millivolts. Repolarization occurs followed by hyperpolarization, and then the sodium-potassium pump getting everything back to normal. And that's it. Not too bad, right?